So today we're going to dive into a marriage lesson. So respecting your husband. Now, don't turn off if you think you're respectful or you don't even want to hear about respect because the first thing that might come to mind is, well, my husband doesn't deserve respect. But bear with me. I want to dive into that with you. So we're going to dive into four ways to respect your husband very, very specifically. And so society says, like, your husband should earn respect. And if you're a Christian and a believer, the Bible says the opposite. Your husband doesn't just deserve respect. He needs it. It was designed in the way that God made him that he needs your respect. So would you be willing to open your mind just for 10 minutes, the little bit of time that we have together, to see if there's ways where you could increase your ability to respect him? Because what I've found to be true is that as I respect Skylar, and I meet his needs, he then in turn desires to meet mine. And then we get in this flow of meeting each other's needs and we've created an amazing, dynamic, intimate, and passionate marriage. So number one, I think the biggest thing, the overarching theme is regardless of what your husband does, can you respect his desire to? We're going to talk about four things, but his desire to, the first one is work and achieve. So your husband might not be the best provider right now, but if he's working hard and going at it, can you respect his desire to achieve so that even when he fails, even when he maybe lets you down or loses money, can you respect his desire to go at it and be at it for the family? Recently, we had a real estate investment that is just going very, very south. And we are making, um, we're losing money on the deal. And I hate losing money. And so it triggers this like, man, perfection in me, right? Skylar should have known. Skylar should have done this. He should have done this. And for a second, I wanted to get super pissed at him and tell him all the ways he should have done it differently. And I had to take myself back and say, okay, what's more important here? If he's going to be leading our family and investing in things and working at things and working at businesses all of his life, what can I appreciate? And I was like, you know what? I can appreciate the fact that he wanted to um, have an investment for us. And I can appreciate that he's the one that makes the money. So if he's going to lose money, he's the one that's going to make it up. And he doesn't like to lose money just as much as I don't. So does it do me any good to beat him down for losing money? He probably already feels bad enough. So what do I get out of beating him down for losing money? And when I check into that question, I get to feel righteous, right? I get to feel good about myself, and I get to feel better than. And I used to be addicted to those feelings, to feeling better than him, right? But that doesn't serve our marriage. That doesn't serve us coming together and creating intimacy. So can you appreciate, when you think about your husband's desire to achieve, desire to provide, right? Can you appreciate that even when... It's not happening the way that you want it to. So secondly, can you appreciate his desire to provide and protect for your family? So again, this might not be something that he does perfectly, but do you even recognize the times when he does protect you, right? Do you allow him to protect you emotionally? Like, do you go to him when you're struggling and sometimes protecting you could be the opposite of what we feel like protecting. So ladies, when you go to your husband and you're um, sad about something or you bring a problem to him and he goes to solve it. I teach men that I work with not to do that. But when he goes to solve that, I want you to know that that's him leaning in to try and protect you. He's like, man, my wife is struggling with this. And when Skylar goes to solve things, it makes me feel like he's judging me sometimes and that like, I just need him to hear me. And I'm going to do a video on that. But for right now, like, can you, can you see the moments where your husband tries to solve your problems, even though you don't want him to solve them in those moments sometimes, but that that is a way that he's actually trying to protect you. He's leaning into you and he sees this woman struggling and he doesn't want that right? He wants you to be without that problem. So he's trying to protect you and say, okay, well, this is what you need to do to get out of it because I don't want you to be in that. So can you appreciate his desire to protect you, his desire to kind of shelter you from things? Maybe your husband doesn't share what's going on in his life. Like he doesn't share all the struggles, and, but you want deeper vulnerability. 
But could you see that that could be a way that he's also protecting you because he doesn't want to stress you out. He doesn't want to worry you. He doesn't want to um, unnecessarily burden you, right? And so maybe those are things that you want to shift in your marriage. But just for a second, can you appreciate his desire to protect you? So that's the second thing. So the third thing is can you appreciate his desire to be strong and lead? So society right now is teaching women that they should be the leaders and that men are incompetent. Like I see it all the time in kids' movies where they portray this male figure as weak and incapable and this woman as the one that's supposed to be leading. And I don't know about you ladies, but when I led um, my relationship prior to Skylar, I created divorce and I just felt this undue burden on me. And I was like, man, this is not the way that God designed it to be. And I wanted to find a man that would lead. And when I say that, that doesn't take away any of my strong qualities. I lead a long Skylar, but I'm willing to give up the final decision knowing that he desires to lead our family. I, I get to say all my side and I lead alongside him and I do things, but when we're making a decision together, at the very end, I'm like, okay, I know you're going to do what's best for our family. Do you trust your husband with that? Do you allow him to lead and not lead perfectly again? Because it, this isn't perfect execution on all of these things, and then that equals you respecting him. Or that's what society would say, but I'm going to challenge that. Because are you perfect? Heck no, you're not perfect. You might think you are, right? And that, that's for another video. But you might think you're perfect. But when we put this perfection on our husband and that he's supposed to meet all these needs and then you'll reward him with his respect, it deflates him. It cuts him at the balls. Like it doesn't give him this desire to achieve or to protect or to lead because it, it's this incapable thing. Like he's not going to be capable of doing it. It doesn't give him the wiggle room to make mistakes because mistakes are where he learns and mistakes are where he gets better and mistakes are where he grows just as you need to make mistakes, right? So can you appreciate his desire to lead? Or every time he starts to lead, do you take that from him, correct him, tell him how he's doing it wrong, and point out all the things that he made mistakes in? So again, not does he, can you respect his desire to lead perfectly, but can you respect his desire to lead? And you would know if you can respect his desire to lead when he makes mistakes. So when your husband makes mistakes, what are the words you say to him? Does he get more of your support or less of your support? Do you speak into him and tell him how you like love him and how you support him? And no matter what, you'll be right next to him. Or do you tell him about all the past, like this mistake and then that one and then that one and then that one and then that one? Do you build him up like as his wife, as the one person that gets to be in his ear and Pump him up to be the best man that he can be, right? Other than the Holy Spirit, like you are that person. So are you taking that role seriously? Like, can you appreciate his desire to lead? And lastly, this is a big one. Can you appreciate his desire for sexual intimacy? So God designed men with testosterone, and that testosterone gives him that desire to lead and to achieve and to conquer and to do all the things that men are great at doing, right? And of course, women have testosterone too and have those qualities, but more in men, right? More, they're built for it. Like they're built to battle. They're built to win, yes? If they haven't had their spirit cut out of them by us women sometimes that know how to demasculate them. But can you appreciate his desire for sexual intimacy? Because yes, as you enjoy the benefits benefits of his testosterone in everyday life, that testosterone equally has this desire intimately. And so you could say, all my husband wants from me is sex, right? And it could be this negative thing, or it could be this thing that you see it as every time he wants to grab your butt or have you flash him or wants a picture from you, is that he's choosing you intimately. You are the one legitimate source of sexual satisfaction for him. And so every time he wants to be intimate with you or connect with you in that way, that's him choosing you. But so often I hear wives say, but I just don't want to, and oh, he wants this, and oh, he wants that, and it's like this turn off that their husbands are turned on by them. 
And I know, ladies, that if your husband just wants sex from you and he's not connecting emotionally with you or he's not showing up for you in other ways, it's hard to hear this message. But what if the key to getting that emotional connection, that everyday connection, was you just giving all of yourself intimately? Because God designed men and women differently in that way. So women often thrive most of the time with emotional connection. That then get, like, breaks our walls down and we want to be together intimately. But for men, they feel that emotional connection sexually. After sex, after sex, they feel emotionally connected. That exact same thing. So who goes first in your relationship? If both of you guys are at a stalemate waiting for the other to go, who's going to shift? And so I challenge you that if you're watching this video, that it's you that shifts first. Like, can you give of yourself intimately and appreciate his desire and not make it wrong or bad or dirty or whatever you do with it, right? Like, that, like he shouldn't have it that way. Like, this God-given testosterone desire sexually. Like, can you appreciate that desire and thank him for the times that he wants to be intimate with you, even if it's more than what you do? And so that in itself could shift your marriage. So those are just four ways that you can respect your husband. So your, his desire to achieve and conquer and to go to provide and protect, right? To his intimate desire and to be strong and lead. So I'd love to hear what um, stood out to you most in this video. And if you're not subscribed, definitely subscribe. And there's more great stuff on intimacy, connection, communication, and marriage. So I'll see you soon.